God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, him, you will, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. One of the great events of the Old Testament that we should always keep in mind is the one that we heard this morning, that of the making of the molten calf and the worship of the molten calf. And we can read the, we can understand this event on, on two levels that are related to each other. On the first level, uh, I'll just share with you what our Holy Father, uh, Pope Benedict, wrote about this, this event uh, when he was still Cardinal Ratzinger in a, in a wonderful book called The Spirit of the Liturgy. And he says what the, what the event of the molten calf exposes is this constant attempt on our part to worship God our way. Now we all have this natural desire to be religious inside of us, but because of sin that we want to worship God our way. And the people of Israel, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to worship God's way now Moses goes away for the 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai with the thunder and the, and the smoke, and they don't know what's happened to him, and they have, to, they have to be in attention waiting for all of this. It's difficult to live in the presence of the living God. And so our tendency is that we begin to form things so that it's more comfortable for us, and that we want to, 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 worship, to worship him 
in a, in a way that's perhaps not so intense. You know, and this can show up in different ways in our, in our own times. Right? I've, I've had conversations with people as a priest who say, oh, Father, you know, I don't have to go to Mass on Monday. I, can, I go for a walk in the woods and I, and I pray to God there. And I always say, well, that's fine, but and that's good. We should always pray to the Lord when we're walking in the woods. But he's asked us to come to worship him on Sundays, to honor the Sabbath, to keep it holy, to involve, be involved in public worship. And the same is too with, this is where we would part company with our Protestant brothers and sisters, to praise the Lord on the Sunday, to worship him in, with, with songs and hymns and spiritual songs and Holy Scripture. And that's great. We should do that. But yet the Lord has asked us to worship him through the worship of the covenant. And the old covenant with, its, with, the, with the law and the sacrifice, and when that covenant has been fulfilled in the new, then we worship him according to the new covenant. And the new covenant is this, when Jesus said at the Last Supper, do this in memory of me. That we worship God in the new covenant of the cross and our access to the cross through the sacred liturgy. This is the way the Lord, the, the Lord has asked us to worship him. And then even among us Catholics, right, it can be difficult to, say, to put our own agendas aside and to say, let's worship the Lord in the liturgy as the church gives it to us. And I'm sure we've all had experiences in our, in our life as believers where, where uh, you know, we've been at masses where people are monking around with, with, with the way the worship is done changing the prayers, changing the words, all that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's that golden calf mentality that stays with us, right? that we want to do things our own way. Fortunately, here at Sacred Heart, you have a pastor that his, his one concern is that we, ha we worship God according to the way the church has given the liturgy to us. Thanks be to God for that. Now, this, that's that, that initial level, but underneath there's a second level, and what is this golden calf mentality that we carry around with us? Well, another way for, say, for, for, I, for another way, term to call that is called concupiscence. Right? And this is the damage that original sin has done to our souls. We have this concupiscence in which it's, it's, like, it's like a, vi a spiritual virus inside of us that constantly is working for selfishness constantly working for this egocentrism that myself as the center, myself as God, myself above everything else. Now, in itself, concupiscence is not sinful, right? but it's one that disposes us to sin. Right? And this is something in Lent to be, to be aware of. That's why we confess. Right? That's why we seek the sacraments in prayer, to be working against the concupiscence inside of us. That, go, that golden calf mentality that wants to set ourselves up as the arbiter of all things. Because it is difficult to live in the living presence of the Lord. What's required is humility. To set aside the golden calf, to allow Moses, as what he did, to grind the golden calf into powder and to throw it in the water and make the people drink it, not as so much as punishment for them, but by doing that, he was ensuring that they would never be able to reconstitute that gold and make a golden calf again. Right? So we want to surrender that golden calf to the Lord and to, and to live in his, to, instead to receive from him his love and to grow in his humility, that we can work against our concupiscence and to worship him in spirit and truth and in freedom.